Hi, I'm Emily, the lead 3D artist here at CSN. I'm going to show you how to turn something like this into something like this using CSN's image to 3D AI. So in order to start rigging, you're going to need a login or account with Mixamo. It's completely free. This is where we will get the auto rigging and the animations from. Um, and then you're also going to need this Mixamo Blender add-on. This is also free, but this helps turn the skeletal mesh into an actual rig. Um, this is very important, especially if you're doing the face animations. Um, and then also you're going to need this face it add-on. Um, it is a bit on the pricier side, but it's super cool, uh, super helpful. Uh, the best rigging I've ever experienced with face rigging. Um, and this is only optional if you plan on doing any facial expressions or anything with your character. This add-on is really cool. Um, you can use a face motion capture in order to get expressions or you, it naturally does uh, really natural expressions as well and has great skin weighting. So when you download some of these add-ons, you're going to get a zip file, do not unzip it. Um, what you're going to do is go in under uh, file, preferences, and then add-ons. You're going to press install and then you're going to select that uh, folder um, and then you're going to check the Mixamo add-on and then check the if you want the face it, you're going to also do the same thing with the face it add-on. If it's all done correctly you should see it pop up on the side panel under like your view and item uh, it should say face it and then also mix them well. So to export the mesh to mix them well, I'm just going to do the main body pretty much. That's all I need to be rigged. I'll attach the clothes and the hair a little bit later, um, but we're going to apply all transform. Um, make sure it's all the parts are on the zero axis, no rotation, and the scale is set to one. Uh, this will help out with any issues down the line with the rig um, and it's just a good practice to do overall. So when exporting, you're going to export it as an FBX. You're going to select only selected meshes and if you wanted the textures to go into Mixamo, you can press copy and then the little printer button next to it. And then you're just going to press export. So when you open up Mixamo, you're going to press the upload character and you're going to upload the character that you exported. Once the character has been imported into Mixamo and it's all good, you have the options to rotate your character or turn around your character if it's not facing forward already, which if you follow the instructions it should be. Um, and then we have some options. Uh, you can either select different number of fingers or you can have no fingers but we're going to go with standard since this is just a normal humanoid um, and our character does not have symmetry so the points would be a little bit off but if your character has complete symmetry uh, that makes, well makes it way easier to just turn on symmetry and place the points. You're going to place the wrist, the chin, the elbows, the knees, and the groin and there's a little uh, picture on the side to tell you where to place these points. Um, your character can be either in T pose or A pose. I know Mixamo likes T pose better, but uh, A pose isn't going to change it anything. So if everything is looking good, uh, Mixamo is going to do this like test animation to kind of see some stuff. You just press next and you should see your avatar pop up on the right and you can explore all the animations. Mixmo has a bunch, um, but I'm specifically looking for a walking animation. So I'm going to scroll and look for a very specific one. You can choose whichever one you want. Once you find the animation you like, um, since we're doing walking, uh, this will just help with a lot of issues later. I'm just gonna put click uh, in place. So she's just going to be walking in place. Um, I'm going to adjust the overdrive, so how fast she's walking. 
um, and then I'm going to adjust the arm space in case any of the fingers or hands are going through different parts of her body. Once I like what I see, I'll click download and then it will pop up with some options. I'm just going to keep everything the same. I want it with this skin since it's going to replace the mesh that we have in Blender right now. The next step would be to import the FBX into Blender and you can see that it has a rest pose and a pose position. The rest pose is going to be handy um, coming up here. We're just going to scoot across the main body that we used before and we're going to reset this into the reset pose so we can attach the clothes and things like that. So in order to get these clothes to move where the body moves, um, we're going to have to do some little stuff here and there. So the first thing is we're going to select the bra and we're going to select the ring. We are then going to press control P and this is going to take you to the parenting options. We're going to hit the empty because we just want that to be attached to the ring. We don't want it to be actually a bone. So now that it, you can see it's going to be under the armature. So the bra is going to be attached to the armature. Um, but if we go back to the moving position, it's not going to be completely deforming with the armature. So we need to go to modifiers, click data transfer, and the main thing is we're going to need to select the body under source, and then we need to select the vertex data in the vertex group, and then we will apply those that modifier. And as you can see now the bra is deforming and moving with the armature. To attach the face like the eyes and the eyebrows to the rig so they also move, you can do the same thing as we did with the clothes if you're not doing the face rig, but if you're doing the face rig just do empties for now. So for the hair, um, you can attach it now. Um, this is only if you are doing just the body rig, uh, do not worry about this right now if you are doing the body and the face rig. You're going to select the hair first and then the rig and then you're going to go to pose mode. You're going to select the bone that you want it to be attached to. I select the head bone and then I'm going to press Control p and that's going to bring me the same parenting and then I'm going to press bone. So now it's attached to that bone. So the last step before we move on is I like to place my character back into the pose mode so I can see where she's bending and I can see where the meshes of the clothes are going through the body mesh so I will use the sculpt tool to kind of inflate them, smooth it out so it looks a little bit better and I do this to make sure it goes both ways where it looks perfectly fine. So I'm going to go over a little bit of the Faceit tool. You're going to click the Faceit uh, add-on and uh, what you're going to want to do next is select all the objects in your scene that you want this rig to uh, manipulate. Um, so for that it's going to be the body, eyes, the eyebrows, the uh, eyelashes, and the teeth. Um, here you don't have to select the hair either. Um, it might cause some issues down the line, so I do unselect the hair. You're going to click the register face objects. So all the objects that you selected is now registered under the face set. So these are all the things that you can start selecting and putting them under the correct category. This is another good example of why you want to name your meshes uh, on a good name. Uh, it's easy to identify so you don't get confused, um, but yeah. So the next thing we're going to want to do is start uh, adding certain meshes to certain categories. So for main, we're going to add the main body. 
or if you just have a portrait, it's just the portrait and it's going to tell you if it's been added or not. Um, for the eyes, you're going to select the left eye, assign it to the left eye, and you're going to do the same thing to the right eye. The next thing we're going to do is assign the teeth and the tongue. So we are going to select the teeth mesh. And then we are going to uh, single it out. So what we're going to have to do is go into edit mode and we are going to select the top part of the teeth. We're going to use the faces and if you just hover over a certain area and then press L, it is going to select that entirety of that object. So I'm here clicking all the teeth for the upper part of the jaw and then I'm going to assign it, make sure everything's selected, I'm going to assign it to the upper teeth. I'm then going to do the same thing to the bottom jaw and I'm going to assign all of these to the bottom teeth. And for the tongue you're going to do the exact same thing, make sure it's all selected and of course you're going to assign it to the tongue slot. going to assign anything else on the face like facial hair so we're going to assign the eyelashes um, we're going to assign the eyebrows all under the facial hair so the next thing we're going to do is go into the next tab and we are going to start the process of uh, putting the landmarks on the face. You can select the asymmetry button. Um, I did have this selected because my character is not symmetric. If your character is symmetric, don't worry about pressing it. Um, and then we're going to generate the landmarks. You can also mask out the face as well to make it easier. Um, and then press generate landmarks. You're gonna see this like weird little mask thing. Uh, best thing to do is line it up with the chin as best as possible. Align it with the jaw and then align it with the eyes. It's not going to be perfect, but you'll alter that later on. And there you go. So now we have all these little dots on her face. We are going to try to align them up as easy as possible. Um, first thing I noticed were the center lines were a bit off. So I selected, deselected the um, symmetry button and lined it up better myself. Um, and if you just follow this video on um, kind of like as a guideline of where to place all these dots, um, it is really easy, super self-explanatory. generate landmarks again and it's going to take us to the side profile and we can actually go ahead and turn the whole character around. Uh, we just want to make sure these uh, spots are actually in the correct space on the character. As you can see some of the dots are not placed at all on the character so we just want to alter it, um, fix it, make sure you turn, keep turning your character around in different viewpoints so you know it is completely on top of your avatar. So 
So once you've got everything situated, one thing I learned that helps, um, if you take the turn off the snap tool and take the vertices that align on the corners of the eyes, you just want to kind of push them into the mesh. Uh, this helps with rigging for some reason. Um, and you want to do it the same thing to the corners of the mouth as well. You just need to push them in slightly. So now that we have everything all situated, we are going to press generate facet rig. This is going to give us our main face rig. We are going to then press the bind button and this will bind the face rig to the meshes. We are going to go to the next uh, expression tab and we are going to load the uh, KR kit expressions and this is going to give you all the generated expressions that face it did for you. In the expression phase, you can alter the intensity of each expression. You can press the little arrow button and you can either turn it up or turn it down in intensity. So in this step, you might actually want to alter some of the uh, face expressions, like the tongue out. Um, don't worry about the mouth not being open, but you do want the tongue to be placed in between the lips. Um, this will help for animations down the line. So now that we have all of that set up, we can go to the next tab and this is where we will add our body rig. We will join the facet rig and the body rig together. Um, so unhide your armature and you will go to the Mixamo tag. You are going to zero out your rig. This is going to delete all the animations on it, which is fine. We will re-put the animations back on, but this will help with any issues with uh, attaching the body rig to the face rig. So now we have a completely working control rig for the body. Um, you can see it looks a little bit different now. We are going to go back into the face it tab and we are going to join together the face it rig to the armature. Make sure it is named in the correct pot spots. And then also if you don't have the bone there, it's going to be the very top, the head bone, where the face it rig is going to be attached to, but it should already be there. Um, and then you're going to press join bar body. It's gonna give you this warning. You cannot go back. So I would say save this file before you do all of this. So if, just in case things don't work out, you can always go back to the previous file. So now that it's done loading, you now have an attached face and body rig. Uh, make sure it is all moving together. Make sure the clothes you attached before is also moving still with it. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. All right, so now we are going to generate this. Uh, make sure you do select the key face it rig. Um, I did have that issue before, but make sure you do select it. Um, and then we are going to go to the next tab, and this is going to show all our little face expressions for the AR kit that we are going to be animating a little bit later. And this is also the area where you can control the intensity of the each expression, um, and then we are going to bake the expressions. So now we will have a face it AR kit rig. Um, this makes it a bit easier and more natural um, on the animations because it limits how far you can go. Um, and it looks really great and it's super easy to animate. So now you can actually go in and if you have an iPhone um, 
or any Apple product, you can actually download these certain apps in order to do the face motion capture. I do not. So I just went ahead and animated a quick and easy face animation of just her blinking, her smiling slightly, and her opening her mouth. Uh, because of this rig, it does not take long at all. It takes about like 15 minutes. Um, you, this is always a choice, but you can always do the face motion capture as well. So now that we're done with the facial animations, we're going to work on the body one. We're going to transfer that animation onto our main rig. Uh, we're going to go to the Mixamo tab, select the animation ring as our source, and then um, we are going to loop this block animation. As you can see that our walk animation does not loop. We are going to go into the graph editor and we are going to press shift E and you should select the one option right there. This is going to make it loop forever. This next step is super important. Um, you're going to select the armature, go to pose mode, and then you're going to go to the animation and then go to apply animation. This is going to bake the animation onto the rig. So once you've done that, you're going to make sure your an armature for that animation is on the zero axis, so completely zeroed out, all good. Um, this will help with any issues down the line. see the animation is now looping over that span of time which is great this is exactly what we want so now we're going to actually add that animation to our rig we're going to go to the mixamo make sure the source skeleton or armature is in the correct spot we are going to so then select our armature our rig and we are going to hit uh, transfer animation to this rig so if everything works out all right, your character should be moving and the face animations should still be there. In the next part, we're going to talk about how to generate clothes through CSN and putting them on the character and then the staging of how to set up this animation in Render. I'll see you in the next part.